Hi Virgo, welcome to the full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces. Full moons close out cycles. This is a special one because of the lunar eclipse, which kind of gives you the information or a hint as to how the next two and a half years are going to go. So it's a rather important full moon. Um, and that's two and a half years. Normally an eclipse is anywhere from six months to a year. Uh, full moons are usually two weeks to a month, but we're kind of stretching things out here. In any case, you have a really nice um, card, and it happens to be the last card in the deck um, of this particular oracle deck. It is the number five. Um, it is um, a cycle card. It's transformation, which is a significant transition. It did come up upright, so I'm just going to take some lines from the book here. I don't memorize this oracle uh, deck. I don't want to. Uh, and I have the information here readily available. So um, this is a fortuitous card which reveals a time of great inner and possibly outer transition. Uh, you're now at a place where you are capable of transforming your old life into something brand new. Unhealthy patterns uh, of thought and behavior. Uh, are now uh, ready to shift into something much higher, uh, um, a higher resonance of a peaceful non-judgment, non-judgment, sorry, non-judgmental <laughs> non energy, don't judge me. Um, and for some people, this is no less than an opportunity to reinvent themselves. As a result, this card is putting you on notice that you are a powerful manifester. Your inner changes now will reap phenomenal results in the near and distant future. Spend some time going inward, consciously choosing optimism, trust, and self-love. Um, wow. Five is change. It's also the uh, kind of ups and downs of, of situations, of, of, of anything. It's a bit inst uh, inst uh, unstable, but um, it does push us to find balance and thus change. Uh, so, very fortuitous card, I think, for you. Nice. Now, let's see. This is the direction that this particular reading is going in, and probably you're going to have some very big changes in the next two and a half years. The first set of cards is where you find yourself at the time of the full moon. And... Um, If you are consciously or actively closing out a cycle, this is where you will find that information. The second set of cards is you, how you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're doing. Um, and the last set of cards is the probable outcome, probable because, some things we are able to change when we have the information some things we are meant to experience, but always for our, uh, our growth. Right, I'm just going to readjust this really quick. Okay. Maybe you turn from <laughs> water to a fire sign. No, I'm kidding. All right. Let's see. Not so much glare. All right. Uh, you have... Only one major arcana card. The rest is pretty mundane stuff. However, I do think that this has a lot to do with uh, your craft, your work, um, focusing. Um, it's very possible that you have been dealing with some... So this is where we're transforming, right? We have some difficult energy with that Five of Cups. Five of Cups is... Um, it's the grief card. It's kind of really... Uh, focusing on what is negative as opposed to what is still standing. Um, it's a card where you can um, maybe, for some, not everybody obviously, rely too heavily on substance, so substance abuse, but because of this sort of 
um, uh, emotional instability that you're feeling. It's 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 a grieving card, and and grief is is a part of a cycle, but this card. Um, kind of puts you on alert that staying in this energy too long uh, can bring on depression. And maybe there were some things that were not satisfactory in your work life or your physical life, because for me this card is um, physical health, but good health, because eight is a power number, and um, healthy body, healthy work life, healthy wallet, therefore. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's overtime, so um, it's a it's really kind of like focusing on what you're doing and not having much time for anything else. It's overtime. You're good at what you do. You're good at your craft, so you can just knock it out. But it is craftsmanship, um, and so there could be maybe that was uh, for a few of you. A very dissatisfied feeling of only work, all work and no play kind of energy. Um, maybe because you were grieving, you just sort of put your attention on work and nothing else. That's also a, a, another possibility with the, these two um, cards in particular. Um, but you have another five here, and five is definitely transformation. There could be a female... Um, that you are grieving or having some sadness or it could be the female that is um, dealing with some sadness this is a queen of pentacles she's somebody square in features um, very concerned about so this is a very new age energy the, the, the queen of pentacles is associated with Aquarius for me and they like to try new and different modalities of healing. But it can also be somebody like dietitian, but, this, you know, Ayurveda even, because it's not a, a real, it's not mainstream. So they like to try new different techniques of healing um, and well-being, because it's always about finding stability in your physical uh, body and your financial well-being it's looking she's always looking for stability but she does it through concentrating on things of the earth uh, very earthly things so she's not going to be somebody who meditates her way through good health she's going to use herbs and spices and maybe even her physical body like um, like EFT like tapping or um, yoga uh, and while yoga might be conventional now, it's not, um, <laughs> it's probably not approved by the, the medical board or anything like that. It's, it's, it's things that are a little off-center. Um, so this matches that Eight of Pentacles, which is looking for stability where health is concerned and where your finances are concerned. But I do think that Five of Cups may be um, the root of any uh, instability that you could be feeling. And that is sort of, kind of, it's, it's a little bit of the card of, of looking at the glass half empty. However, there's transformation here with the, with the Five Cycle card. And that is good how you're dealing with everything is the hanged man and the ten of swords ten of swords is really kind of it's first of all a ten is um, the end of a cycle while simultaneously beginning something new but it is a an exhaustive uh, card we're exhausted here we're done it's it's I can't take any more kind of stick a fork in me I'm done kind of energy um, it could lead to some uh, actual physical pain, which could be back aches or neck aches and tension uh, problems, uh, that sort of thing. And we're kind of really just looking for peace of mind. But the idea here is that there is something that we have to give up with the um, hanged man card. Things are not always in our hands with the hanged man. Um, there is enlightenment in seeing things from another perspective. 
but it is surrendering something and a lot of it can be control surrendering uh, control uh, so it's kind of like we've exhausted our mental capacity and maybe even our physical capacity especially with that eight of pentacles that's really working very hard and now it's kind of time to so the hanged man is associated with the element of water it's kind of time to go with the flow right we've done what we can now we sort of have to let it go and a lot of this is letting go of control however the hanged man is if you wait and you wait with faith you usually get what you want um, but the idea here is to see things from another perspective you are behaving like the queen of swords so this is my virgo card and this is a very sharp um, mind it's a critical thinker uh, but it can also be a sharp tongue right and very and very criticizing she can criticize quite easily in another uh, deck that i have she has a man's severed head in her hand <laughs> so um, she also has the ability to cut people off and um, but this you know the sword cuts both ways so a critical mind knowing what to cut off knowing what is no longer necessary surrendering and sacrificing is is the hangman so sacrificing something in order to gain uh, a new um, a new cycle uh, let's say it's work right we really wanted to start on this new thing we've been really busy with it and um, perhaps it hasn't gone well or perhaps we we've, we've had a couple of uh, jobs that we've had to do and work overtime etc etc and you get exhausted now and maybe you just kind of have to give up that particular fight it's that kind of energy um, but the queen of swords doesn't give up easily I will say that so it really would I would say take a lot to to have you surrender both of these cards the ten of swords and the hangman are very sort of surrendery cards they're both kind of um, exhaustive um, the hangman is Odin the god the Norse god Odin who gave up an eye for knowledge the two gentlemen in the outcome um, will probably be helpful in this transformation um, and remember that ten of swords is you're simultaneously beginning something new and I see you working quite hard at it and rather focused but it does really leave you kind of emotionally exhausted and and missing something emotionally and the king of cups is the master of his emotion and the king of wands is the master of his passion king of wands is going to be somebody round in features um, they like history they are the calm in the storm um, they're very emotional very caring very giving this is associated with cancer but they can also be very protective of themselves uh, it's a cardinal sign they expect the best from themselves they expect the best from others um, it's very much the entrepreneur card the king of wands is associated with Aries for me and um, this is somebody long in features uh, they are trailblazers they are great at managing situations they are good at leadership um, they can be negatively a know-it-all um, but they're kind of the first to go in you know they have that sort of courage it is it is Aries and Aries is the first sign of the zodiac so it's kind of the, the the baby right and willing to explore and touch fire and see what happens and and then they'll report back to you right <laughs> through cries probably but 
meaning that they're trailblazers. They'll, they'll check it out. They'll be the first to go in and let me experiment. Let me try. Let me see. It's um, very self-sustaining. Both, uh, both kings are. And they are masters or mastering something. And you have the Knight of Cups with that. So the Knight of Cups are friendly, happy, romantic invitations for some. But I do feel like these are people that are going to bring in some happiness and some fun into your life. Um, I would be careful of libation with these two cards together. This is the person who dances on the table with the lampshade on his head if it gets out of hand. And like I said, Five of Cups can kind of be the card of masking our grief with substance. So do mind your libation. But these are people who are going to bring some fun and, and interesting things into your life. Um, some relaxation, some joy, some emotionality, help you to transform things. Um, could be holidays, could be people that you're going to uh, visit. There are choices with this individual, or these two people actually. Maybe you're choosing, because this can be romance as well, right? Maybe you're choosing between two people. Um, maybe it's romantic, maybe it's just, can I holiday there, or can I holiday over here? Or um, maybe it's Christmas, or maybe it's n New Year's, but there are choices. And the Seven of uh, Cups is a choice of... Um, it's, seven uh, is the number of ethics, and so there can be an ethical choice here necessary. But it is kind of confusion within those choices. However, we still have the transformation card, so I don't think that those are difficult choices, right? It's fun or more fun. Um, uh, getting out of the sort of doldrums and um, overwork. Both of these uh, kings, though, are quite uh, focused on what they're doing. But I do think both of them can enjoy themselves and have a good time. It's not like the King of Pentacles, who's... Uh, I think the King of Pentacles could be a very serious individual. Um, but I think both of these uh, two kings have a good sense of humor and enjoy uh, having fun. I think part of the transformation here from what I see is uh, going from focusing too much on the material to um, enjoying life a little bit more. But it does leave you with that Seven of Cups, which is saying kind of like, well, okay, so what is important here? What does matter? These are the seven planets that have something, you know, seven different things to offer you. And it's kind of like, all right, well, you know, what really is important to me? And I think you'll transform into that. Maybe it's just having more joy in a work situation, right? Or if uh, at least balancing the situation. Hmm. For some reason, I want to pull one more. allies. They're allies. They can help you to get um, ahead of the competition, a leg up over the competition. Um, maybe they're people that you have uh, workshops with or go to workshops or um, like they can suggest uh, self-help books or um, but whatever it is they're allies and they do help you to um, answer some of those questions that are a little bit confusing for you. But it seems like it's fun. And creative. Alright, I'm happy with that. Alright, so let's see what Spirit wants you to know. Hmm. This has come out for a few people. It's a surprise. Look for the unexpected today, which is not today, but 
there can be a lot of unexpected transformation, a lot of unexpected change in the next two and a half years. But like I said, you're going to get an inkling of the direction that those two and a half years will be going in this uh, lunar eclipse, full moon situation. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been helpful. I'll return in two weeks with a new moon reading. Bye for now.